Hey, Daryl from Pro Podcast Solutions, and today we're taking a look at the Yeti. <laughs> no, not that one. Man, I miss Disneyland. Well, the Blue Yeti is one of the most widely used, and I would also add the most widely hated podcast microphones on the market. I see it all the time when somebody's on a Facebook group asking for advice on which microphone they should get, and someone will inevitably say, hey, get the Blue Yeti, I love it. And then someone else will come in and say, anything but the Blue Yeti. <laughs> and it's, it's very divisive in that way. Uh, all of us, by the way, not all of us, I don't want to speak for everybody who's a professional podcast editor, but I can speak for many of us because I know them. We don't like the Blue Yeti as podcast editors. We advise our clients not to get it. And in fact, one of my podcasting colleagues, Carrie, she has a t-shirt that she's made that says anything but a Blue Yeti. In fact, some of you might have thought when I started this video today to show you how to get the best use out of a Blue Yeti, that it might just be me throwing it into the trash can. As much as I would love to do that, what I would love to do more is to actually help you get the best use out of your Yeti. In fact, some of you are probably my clients who I have sent to watch this video to help you get the best use out of the Yeti because it is a good microphone if you set it up and use it right. So there are three things that a lot of people get wrong about the Yeti. And frankly, Blue is at fault on some of this. And we're gonna take a look at those three things and then we're gonna give you three or more things that you can do to not only get the best sound out of the Yeti, but to sound like a pro using the Yeti. Let's go. So as you can see here, we have moved the camera around a little bit, positioned some things differently so that you can see things from a side view. And that gets me to the first of the three things that uh, people do wrong with the Yeti. And by the way, the audio that you're hearing right now uh, is being recorded from the Blue Yeti. So the first thing that people do incorrectly with this microphone is that they use the built-in stand. And this is what, earlier when I said that Blue is to blame for some of the misuse and poor sound that people experience with the Yeti. And that is they built in this stand uh, that's clearly designed so that you can just stick the Yeti on your desk and go. And they're not the only ones that are at fault with this. Um, the ATR2100 from Audio-Technica comes with this little rinky-dink stand. I thought I had one sitting over here, I don't. Um, and even the brand new ZDM1 from Zoom comes with a, a small little stand that's not sufficient to get the microphone uh, up to your mouth. Now, what is different about the blue microphone versus those other two that I mentioned is that it is a condenser microphone. Uh, some will say that condenser microphones are more sensitive uh, than dynamic microphones, and I can understand why that's said. I've even said that in the past. The, I think the better explanation is that their frequency response is more sensitive. They, they pick up different frequencies than uh, or greater range of frequencies than dynamic microphones do. The other thing with uh, condenser microphones is uh, a lot of time they are designed to be used with some distance between the microphone and the person using it. People like those so that they don't have a microphone on camera with them, for example. The downside of that is because there's distance between you and the microphone, then you don't get the full richness and the warmth of your voice. The farther you are from the microphone, then the, the more your voice, the sounds, the sound waves coming from your mouth have a chance to dissipate and scatter. And so your just being farther away from the microphone is going to really damage the quality of your voice. And because of the built-in stand with the Yeti, a lot of people will just clunk it down on a desk, think that it's good to go, and that's all there is to it. But what you really ought to do, and we'll demonstrate this in a few minutes, is uh, disconnect the Yeti from the stand and put a different stand on it that will get it up to your mouth. So we'll cover that in a minute, but that's point number one of what people do wrong with the Yeti. Point number two that people do wrong with the Yeti is they point it in the wrong direction. Let me pull out one of my other microphones here. Uh, this is uh, this is a pile. 
uh, what, PDM, PD Mic 58. It's made to look at the Shure SM58. And you may have even noticed at the beginning, I'll be demonstrating it at the end, uh, my Electro Voice RE320. These microphones are designed to be pointed to your mouth like this. Um, and so when people, and that's the, I would say the most common way to use a microphone. We've all seen singers and whatever, if we're, we go to church, everyone uses a microphone with a microphone pointed towards your mouth. That's not the case with the Yeti. So the Yeti is, uh, is designed to be talked into the side like I've been demonstrating here, but I've seen so many people take the Yeti and point it toward their mouth like they would uh, any other mic or most other mics. And as you can hear, the difference now between the quality of my voice is substantially different and not nearly as good. So the, the number two mistake that people make with the Yeti is pointing it in the wrong direction. It's not an end fire microphone. It is a side fire microphone and you can tell even now even though I'm still using it on the desk stand my voice is much better particularly when I look into the microphone and speak directly to it rather than facing the camera where my voice is now projecting into a different direction so make sure that you're talking into the side now blue does give instructions with the microphone that you should talk into the side of it but People don't read directions, right? <laughs> I'm certainly guilty of that, and a lot of people don't with the blue either. Make sure that you're talking into the side of the microphone, not the end or the top of the microphone. The third thing I see people doing wrong with the Blue Yeti is they try to record multiple people with one microphone. And Blue is also at fault with this, in my opinion. Uh, there are four settings on the back of the microphone. Let me move it quietly here. Um, right here, this knob gives you four different pickup patterns for the Yeti. The one I have it on right now is the one that I recommend. It's the cardioid pattern. And what that does is it brings in or, or accepts sounds coming from the front of the microphone and rejects sounds coming from the sides and the rear of the microphone. And that's what you want. That's what the other microphones that I've that I showed you, the ones that I'm using, and the one I showed you, the pile one I'm, I showed you, those are all cardioid pattern microphones. And those are best for recording podcasts. The other functions on the Yeti, there's three others, bi-directional, stereo, and omnidirectional. Omnidirectional is going to capture sound from every from 360 degrees around the microphone and blue describes that as good to pick up a band or something like that set the mic down it'll pick up sound from everywhere and that's not that's not bad that's not a bad application or bad advice uh, the other two bi-directional um, they say uh, and they also say omnidirectional for like putting it down on the table and picking up multiple voices that's not good advice. And bi-directional, they also say it's good to do like a one-on-one -on -one type of interview. You put the, the mic down between you and you can pick up someone over there and then pick up yourself on the other side of a table. That I also believe is bad advice. And then the uh, stereo be actually the one they recommend for uh, picking up a concert or something like that. And, and that's fine in that application as well. The the sin here, if you will, the, the bad advice is trying to use uh, a single mic for multiple people. Uh, great rule of thumb is one mic per mouth. One mic per mouth. Whether you're do, using a condenser microphone or some of the other microphones I've shown you in this video, one mic per mouth is going to allow you to capture the best audio. If you want convenience and you want to just be able to take a mic, set it down and record people and you don't care about audio quality, then the Yeti is fine. But what we hear people coming to us saying is, I spent this money on this microphone and it was highly recommended and I wanted to sound professional and I don't. How can I sound professional with my Yeti? And that's what this video is all about. So if you want to clunk it down on a table and have an ease of recording multiple people, that's fine, but you're not gonna sound good. You're not gonna sound professional with that. If you wanna sound professional, one mic per mouth. I don't care what microphone you're using. That's just a good rule of thumb. So the third uh, mistake that I see people making is trying to record more than one person on a single microphone. So now we've identified these three things that people are doing wrong with the Yeti. Now let's see if we can fix all of those and sound professional on this microphone. So now we're going to take a look at three things that you can do to help yourself sound professional using a Yeti. And we've already made one of those changes and you can probably hear a difference in the quality of my voice. 
And that is putting it on a mic stand, a, a bigger mic stand, and getting it up to my mouth. This is a very simple tabletop mic stand I got from Amazon. It's uh, from OnStage, and it's the DS7200B. You can pick it up for under $15. Uh, you see me in the other shots that I started out the video with using a boom arm for my Electrovoice RE320. That's what I do love about the Yeti. It does have a universal microphone screw port on the bottom of the mic, so you can put it onto any microphone stand. You don't have to use the one that is included. As you can see, I've taken it off altogether. So by taking it off that stand and putting it on a simple tabletop mic stand or a boom arm like you saw me use earlier, now I can get it up to my mouth. And once I have it up to my mouth, I can turn the gain down just a little bit and that's going to help it be less sensitive and pick up fewer background noises. It's still going to, you're still going to be able to hear, you know, different things and it's going to pick up rumbling from your desk. You do need to be mindful of that. If you're, if you need to be mindful of desk noise, a boom arm is going to be better, especially a boom arm that you can clamp to a desk next to you, putting it on a different surface. That's going to be great. But just by bringing the microphone close to your voice or close to your mouth, you're going to be able to uh, get a better, richer sound out of your voice just because it's close to it. We talked earlier about how when it's further, your voice is going to scatter. The second thing you want to do is get one of these foam windscreens. So let me demonstrate here the difference. Um, I'm just going to say Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. And you can hear those peas really popping. And that's the thing. When you get it close to your mouth like this, it's going to be more sensitive as we've discussed. And that also means with those mouth noises, plosives especially. So Get one of these. I'll link below. In the description below, I'll not only link to the Blue Yeti if you do want to pick one up, but also to the mic stand here and to the uh, foam windscreen that you're seeing here. And so now I'll demonstrate Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. And it's quite a bit different. And these are really inexpensive as well, under $10, uh, maybe even under $5 for the windscreen. And so just $20, $25 of accessories here, and you've got yourself sounding really, really good. And the third thing, that, and we've already talked about this, but it's worth demonstrating now that we've got it into position, we have the windscreen on you know, addressing it the right way, addressing it head on, or so, <laughs> I'm looking at it head on, but up to the side, you know, we've talked about this. So right into the side, as opposed to the tip or the end. So if I were talking into it like this, it just doesn't sound good, right? But now we put it like it's supposed to right here, talking directly into the side of it. And you sound great. You're going to sound totally professional. So those are the three things. Uh, positioning it right, talking into it correctly, and getting that foam windscreen are going to make you sound really, really good on the Yeti. And some of you may be going, yeah, but look, you've got this foam around you. You're in a soundproof area. That's a camera trick, if I'm being honest. This wall that you see here is only two feet tall. It ends just off the camera shot. Uh, this one here, it serves as my backdrop most of the time. You're getting to see it from a different angle in this particular camera shot. The rest of my room is completely untreated. And so the difference that you're hearing uh, in the quality of the microphone has more to do with what we've talked about. Proximity to my mouth, angling it the right way, putting on the windscreen. Uh, you even heard when we were doing some of those uh, tests earlier when we, when we first put it on, you could hear the room echo and things like that. So just because I've got the foam, don't let that fool you and make you think that's what's making the Yeti sound good. You can sound really good on a Yeti even without having some foam in your room. Now, of course, having the foam here does help some, but it's not helping as much as you might think that it is. So let's switch over back to my preferred mic, my RA320, and close this video up. So there you have it. As you've just seen and heard, it's possible to sound completely professional on a blue yeti uh, three things that were, were really important there getting it up to your mouth addressing it the right way and getting a windscreen on there and then that fourth bonus item this is just as equally important and that is one mic per mouth now i do recommend a dynamic microphone over a condenser microphone like the yeti this one as i've said is the re320 we did a mic shootout recently i'll put that in the card above with seven of the most popular uh, dynamic podcasting microphones so the yeti was not part of that in spite of it being a popular podcast microphone it's not a microphone that we recommend 
Having said that, as you've seen here, if you have already invested in a Yeti, don't worry. You can sound great using a Yeti and be a professional sounding podcaster. Just make sure that you're not using that microphone for more than one person because the minute you try to use more than one person on a Yeti, then professional quality goes out the window. So what do you think? Has this video helped you get the best out of your Yeti? If so, please comment below and let me know. If there's another microphone you'd like for me to check out and do a review on, I'd love to hear that as well. Well, if this video has helped you, please hit that subscribe button and that like button. And don't forget all the links to these products I've talked about are in the description below. Well, thanks for tuning in and until next time, take care.